Consider the vast history of life on Earth for a moment. While this planet hasn't been here since the formation of the Milky Way galaxy, it has been here for a long time. Given that life debuted on Earth very prominently at the very first instant it could, we live on a world that has spent the great bulk of its existence as a habitable living world, at least for everyday life. This provides Earth an exceptionally long window for being recognized as a planet worth investigating by someone else in the galaxy, especially if even microbial life is rare in the universe. We're thinking about missions to ice shell moons and life finder missions to Venus and Mars to see if life in its microbial form exists or once existed in those places or the even more intriguing question of whether life will someday exist in places that might develop conditions conducive to it. One may see a future stronger sun or transitional sun exploding into a red giant, leaving these ice shell moons, or at least one or two of them, open ocean worlds for a period when life may reappear long after the first genesis of life in our solar system has become extinct. Aside from that, it's possible that Earth is unique and that few exoplanets have long enough periods of habitability or durability to support civilizations. And it presupposes that abiogenesis is simple, there may be features of it that we don't yet understand that suggest no, it isn't, and therefore life in the cosmos is uncommon. This may encourage extraterrestrial civilizations to continue their exploration of alien life wherever they discover it or suspect it exists. And if they have a more full view of planetary science, they may be able to identify these interesting worlds with far higher accuracy than we currently do. As a result, we can't rule out the possibility that this star system and our planet had been visited by an alien civilization at some point in their vast history. And there are various ways it may have happened ranging from dropping a probe in systems of interest every time you pass by them in stellar encounters to sending out self-replicating, self-repairing probes to monitor worlds in the long run. And while we typically imagine aliens coming here to interact with humans in science fiction form and establish contact, there is also the possibility that aliens visited a very different, very early planet that bears no similarity to the Earth we know. Humans find periods in Earth's history that showcase and give us an idea of what inhabited other worlds really might look like above and beyond the guesswork typically depicted in sci-fi by exploring past periods in Earth's history long before humans were gleam in the planet's eye. There are numerous similar periods, for example, you could envision the age of the dinosaurs with an Earth covered in a myriad species of tyrant lizards, as they were previously known, though the reality of the dinosaurs was considerably more complex. Hot-blooded reptiles pursuing food with stereo vision eyes, such as the Tyrannosaurus rex, perhaps one once ate an unlucky visiting alien, perhaps the sky filled with flying reptiles, one branch of which still fights age-old aerial conflicts in the form of birds. When I'm stuck for video ideas for this channel, I often sit quietly on my porch and stare skyward. I occasionally see stars, but during the day, I observe lesser birds attacking giant hawks, owls hunting their food at night while surveying the area around them, spring nesting sometimes in the eaves of my house, and many other things that I believe must date back to the dinosaurs themselves. But even the dinosaur era did not have the most bizarre scenery this globe has ever seen. There are other periods that are so different to our current Earth that if aliens ever arrived and studied it, they would have discovered a treasure trove in the study of astrobiology and just what life can do. The first of these imagined earthly alien environments is based on an unverified astrobiology idea, the Purple Earth Theory. Photosynthetic life on Earth requires the more complex and harder to deal with chemical chlorophyll for photosynthesis, which is somewhat of a mystery. However, there is an alternate chemical that appears to be an easier way to achieve the same result. This chemical known as retinol is still used by some forms of life on Earth in the form of simple photosynthesizers known as halorchia, so we know it is used by life, but there may have been a time when it was much more widely used, implying that instead of a green Earth, it would have been a purple Earth. The halorchia are indeed purple. 
This is an interesting state of affairs in photosynthesis because the retinol type prefers the green through yellow region of the visible light spectrum, which the sun emits very strongly, as opposed to the blue and red light chlorophyll-based plants prefer, which avoid and reflect green light, which is why plants are generally green. Some evidence suggests that purple photosynthesis, rather than green, was the initial form. Coevolution and practically symbiotic cohabitation of purple and green photosynthetic species has also been seen. With that in mind, the type of photosynthesis that an exoplanet with life experiences may be reliant on evolution and the type of star that life has to work with. There could be purple worlds with active biospheres that can be found via exoplanet SETI. That would be a nice biosignature, because it's difficult to imagine a planet tinted purple by retinol without a biosphere to make it. Indeed, if there are inhabited worlds out there with intelligent species that only know the retinal kind of photosynthesis and chlorophyll never developed, they might not even know to look at modern Earth for its signature and utterly miss our biosphere. They may speculate that such biochemistry exists, but they discount it as unlikely due to its intricacy and the fact that they have never observed it in nature. To summarize, there may be aliens out there who do not believe Earth exists and will never look for it. Or they may already be aware, having stationed a probe here as their solar system passed by during Earth's microbial-only era. If they had stayed awake long enough, they could have seen the Earth transform from purple to green. To suppose, if they have words and terminology like ours, that may be their name for this universe. Blorkin the Brilliance Photosynthizer, or simply the Changeling World, is a formerly purple now green water world. In general, city researchers would begin by examining for how worlds reflect light from their star. That informs you a lot about whether you're dealing with a chlorophyll or a retinal signature. While considerably larger telescopes are required to seek for this, the James Webb Space Telescope is just on the verge of beginning the search for this in specific circumstances. That being said, let's take a look at a far later stage in the history of the alien Earth. If an alien race visited Earth during the Ordovician or Devonian periods, around 470 to 360 million years ago, and opted to investigate the planet's land mass at the time, they would have encountered a very strange terrain that is extremely different from anything we see today. If they were in the correct area, they would find a forest with huge beings that looked like trees but were actually very different. They'd come across a jumble of massive fungus. This strange group of extinct fungi is known as prototaxites. While calling it a mushroom would be incorrect, understanding how mushrooms and other fungi are useful in imagining this organism, which at the time was the largest land-living organism known to us. Consider a mushroom with no cap, but rather a massive trunk up to a meter broad sticking up in the air up to 8 meters with no branches. You may alternatively imagine a big cactus without arms, but with a radically different physiology and a trunk made entirely of interconnected microscopic tubes. The narrative of this species' discovery is a difficult one, as is so common in paleontology. John William Dawson discovered the first fossils in 1843. Dawson believes these were fossilized conifer trees that preserved the remains of the fungi that consumed them after they died. However, in 1872, William Carruthers came along and completely shattered the theory, to the point where Dawson was compelled to admit it when additional evidence came to light and then swiftly claimed he never thought it was a tree. However, his original moniker has survived to this day and refers to a tree rather than a fungus. Surprisingly, it is still unknown why these massive mushrooms became extinct. There is some evidence that it was more like a lichen and had a layer of symbiotic algae on it. Or the algae might have eaten them, there is evidence of arthropods and borers in the fossils, raising the possibility that they would not have survived the onslaught of newly developed species. Aliens visiting this odd globe have seen a weird landscape of towering fungi and a forest floor of various fungi and early land plants extremely different from what we see on our terrain now. This period also saw something quite uncommon. The Devonian extinction catastrophe ended. 
The source of this mass extinction is unknown, and it appears to have only affected aquatic life. There are other candidates, including a known impact crater structure, but the effects of this extinction catastrophe provided a significant defining watershed for our civilization millions of years later. Essentially, the ocean became anoxic, which means that the water got deprived of oxygen below a particular level. This effectively halted decomposition deep in the ocean. This combined with geology in specific places established the conditions for the formation of a large portion of the world's oil reserves, mainly in North America. So while the possibility of aliens visiting Earth in the distant past cannot be ruled out, it remains an intriguing theory. There have been numerous moments in history when Earth was considerably different from what it is today, but it's exciting to envision alien exoplanets with biospheres that are dramatically different from anything we have here on Earth today. Perhaps even biospheres that are identical to Earth at any point in its history. But let me leave you with this thought. What if those aliens came back to see how things went here, and they found us and filled in the gaps in the story of Earth's natural history? That could be the purpose of a Von Neumann probe. When you make first contact with an active or dead probe, you find a full natural history of your world with the implication that the aliens were simply saying, glad you found our probe, here is a gift of your full natural history, be well and maybe we'll meet sometime. That's something I'd want. Is there anything you'd like to add? Tell us in the comments and follow our channel for regular, in-depth investigations of the fascinating, strange, and unknown facets of our beautiful universe.